Yeah, today's a Tuesday practice for us. So we got a bonus Tuesday in, and it was a really good day, to be honest. First day, uh, we're doing crossover periods with scouts. Uh, I thought it was a really, really uh, good first day. Uh, now, can you sustain that? Can you continue to bring that effort? Can you continue to stay organized, stay focused? That's the challenge. How does, how does this team feel at this time of year compared to last year's team? Yeah, uh, I, I don't want to say something about last year's team. This year's team is focused, man. They love football. They absolutely love football. It's not just they like it when they're on the field. It's not just they like it when they post on social media. They love football. This year's team, they come out here and they work, and it's pretty consistently they work. And the leaders of this team love football. Like, this is what they do. Like, all the time they're thinking about it. Like, they're texting me. They're up in the facility. I see guys with their cars parked outside at 6.30 a.m. getting treatments. Like, they just love everything that goes with football. And I think then you have a group of guys that necessarily don't love it that much, but when you have those leaders who love it, it just raises the standard of everybody else. So is the culture then to the expectation that you set out going into this year? Yeah, I mean, we'll find out. I think going into the season, we're right where, to be honest, I would have liked to be uh, 18 months ago. I think we're right around, you know, I think we've got like-minded people on our team. I think we've upgraded the talent from uh, when we got here, the depth. Uh, from when we got here, I think we're a better football team from when we got here. So I do think we're we're better. I think that's all you're trying to be is just consistently better than you were. And uh, I feel confident that we're uh, definitely a much improved football team. Some coaches week one uh, like to be conservative with the play calling, not show too much of the playbook. What was your approach last year and how do you approach that next year? Yeah, the first play of the season is going to be a swinging gate. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's, it's swinging gate. We got seven different variations of swinging gate in, just like last year. Uh, we may run them all. Hey, Coach, uh, the running backs have been one of the deeper parts of this roster. What have you seen from them, both in practice and all, also outside as people? Yeah, obviously that last comment was a joke, kind of. <laughs> Unless you're Wyoming listening, then it's the truth, maybe. Right. Uh, in terms of the running backs, uh, the depth in that room, you know, drastic difference from last year, the depth in that room. Uh, is really, really good for us, and that's going to keep us fresh throughout the, end, throughout the end of games. You know, when Scott has to run, carry the ball 28, 30 times in a game last year at times, and we're wondering why he's, he's not hitting his top speed, well, there you go. Uh, he's carrying the ball 38, 26, 22 times in a game. Uh, we've got to be able to balance that workload uh, for our backs so they all stay fresh when they touch the ball, right? You're getting a fresh guy having the football, not just from a running perspective, from a ball security perspective. And then, Coach, the energy as well. I know you talked about obviously there's going to be days where guys are down, but it seemed like with the leaders, to take you back off what you're saying there, but just kept the energy up all throughout camp. How do you feel that the rest of the team has got on? Yeah, out? it's hard to convince people to love football, right? You can create an environment that gets people to love it, but eventually whatever environment you create, football is a hard game. We can have more fun than anybody working harder than anybody in the country, but football is hard. Like, it's difficult, it's challenging, and we can make it fun, we can do competitions, but if you don't love the process, right, there's going to be days that you're down. So I truly believe you have to recruit to people that love the game. And I know everybody says that, but do you actually do it is, is the hard part. Do you actually say, well, this guy's an inch taller, but this guy loves the game this much more, who do you take, right? And you have to be willing to to take those guys that you think just love this game with a passion uh, and that they're going to overcome maybe some of their physical obstacles because of their passion, their intelligence. Bouncing off of that, how difficult was it deciding what the scout team was going to necessarily look like this year in comparison to your first year last year? Not very difficult. I mean, the only difficulty was the amount of people last year that we had. We didn't have enough people to really run a scout team. I mean, we're in week six and we have a, a, left, or a tight end playing left tackle on the scout team. And we only have one more guy, another tight end, playing the other backup sixth role. And then we wonder why our defense gets worse throughout the year. I mean, it's, not, it's not ironic that they don't get to practice football and then they're not good, as good at football. But the only way to get good at something is to do it and to practice it over and over again. Right? When you're a pro, you've done it so many times that you don't need to practice anymore. It's nature. It's what you do. Right At this level, these guys need to practice playing the game of football. And the only way you can do that is with availability. Hi, JT. How do you feel about your corners, especially not giving a big play outside the numbers? Yeah, I think uh, those guys have done a, in my opinion, going into fall camp, that was one of my, what are they going to be? 
I think uh, those two guys, Keith and Javen, have really separated themselves uh, in terms of doing a nice job. They're both just such intelligent players. Uh, they both care about the game, and at that position, split indicators and rec route recognition is so important that both those guys play the game with an extremely high IQ. Uh, then you have guys like LT, who's been out a little bit, but he was back today, uh, who's a veteran. You have Young Bucks. So we've got some good balance there. But uh, what I like is that position is not just based off of the talent level. Those guys are really, really savvy football players. And savvy football players create tip balls. Savvy football players create takeaways uh, because they're savvy. Coach, Xavier Guillory said last year was rough on him physically and mentally given all he went through. So throughout both camp and going into the season, how have you sort of seen him handle that adversity and sort of get his legs back? Yeah, I think uh, Coach Ward has been awesome for him. I think that's somebody that he could kind of see some of his own game into, the physicality, the toughness, uh, just the work ethic, the grind. I think he sees a little bit of that uh, in himself. So I think him being able to really engulf himself and learn from Coach Ward has kind of distracted him from maybe all the things that he used to think about. And he was like, oh, this guy told me to do this, I'm gonna do this, and he's really, re fall in love with the process of learning from Coach Ward. And I think all that has done a really good job for him mentally to just kind of stay focused on the day because he feel like he's getting better every day. You said that uh, Canyon Floyd does a good job with hang time. What do you think about your ability to flip the field because the position battle last year was right? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if we'll be as aggressive, obviously, going for it this year as we were last year because we have an ability to punt the ball and flip the field. You know, last year when you're only flipping the field 34 yards and it's fourth and two, right? Fourth and one, it's like, okay, yeah, you can flip it 34 yards or you can take a percentage that should be above 75%, right? Now it's like, well, if we're on the minus 35, we could pin them inside the 20, right? Last year, that wasn't really an option for us. So I, I really, if he booms one, obviously. So I really think that that's a, a, a going to adjust a little bit uh, how we play the football game from an aggressive standpoint because you have a weapon back there who can legitimately flip the field. You called Mike Norvell one of your role models as a coach coming from Florida State. He started the college football season today against Georgia Tech. What's the score? It was they tied. were down right now last time I checked. Okay. But what has he meant to you as far as a role model is concerned now at Arizona State? Yeah, I mean, I saw him as an off a young offensive coordinator. Right, how he managed himself, how he led. Then I saw him as a young head coach, how he managed himself, how he led, how he adapted and changed the situations, how he was a little bit different as the OC than he was the head coach. Uh, I, I saw those changes, and then I saw him change again at Florida State because it was a different team and be willing to adapt uh, to his new team. Uh, and then at Florida State, obviously, we didn't take over a good situation. We took over uh, the pro program was as low as it's ever been since before Bobby Bowden was there. And it was the consistency he had in the process, the ever waving process that sometimes coaches would lose faith, sometimes players would lose faith, but he never did. And when you had that guy, that leader, who just showed the consistency, fans lost faith. We started 0-4 in the second year there. 0-4, we lost to a D1 AA school and started 0-4 in year two. People started to lose faith, but not him. He stayed the course because he knew what he was building. He knew the process that he was instilling and the, the things that actually were tangible and uh, flipped it. I think that's what I learned is you know how to win. In order to do it, you have to stay the course. You can't keep going different directions because there's pressure or because people don't like where you're at. You have to stay the course. In order to get somewhere, keep going. You can't turn around. 21 all, four minutes to go. Any other questions so I can go watch the end of this? <laughs> all right, see you all later. Nice